and it, which I think is like kind of funny. Uh, but you know, I mean, we got breaking again. Tim Waltz is nervous about facing JD Vance in next week's vice presidential Fake debate. News. I love this guy. I love the leading report. Like, I like these guys because they're just like breaking. Trump's going to win all 50 states. That's breaking news, actually. (laughs) Uh, CNN. Is that that. actually according to a CNN article? It's a, I I mean, it, it like, I actually there was a I mean, Twitter source what, what, that came out this morning. Also, We're, who wouldn't be nervous about a nationally televised debate when the stakes are this high? Like, that's not even really <laughs> breaking news. You'd have to be a f- just completely non human sociopath to just <laughs> have no level of nerves going into uh, even a YouTube debate, let alone a freaking debate like that. So, yeah, you know, his palms <laughs> are sweaty, knees weak, arms are yep. heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. His mom's spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface, he looks calm and ready. <laughs> to be wow. honest, though, I do think this is all front. I think that he's basically trying to lower everyone's expectations. I actually do think he knows he's probably going to win this debate. I think he's probably fairly confident, although a little bit nervous as anyone would be, as I mentioned. But I think he knows he's going to do well. I think he's not intimidated in the slightest by J.D. Vance. I think he's had a pretty you know, long lifelong career he's he's dealt with a lot of bullies as he said you know he, he's really not intimidated by jd vance let's be honest this is not an intimidating man um so i think he knows he's going to do pretty well and he's putting this out solely to lower the expectations a little bit so that when he does do insanely good everyone gives him even more credit than they would have what do you guys think i think he's in his mind bro i think he knows exactly <laughs> what he's doing this is psychological war from coach waltz this man was a defensive coordinator in one of the premier high school football teams in minnesota state champion defense i might add this guy knows about intimidation this guy knows about working the mind of the man across the aisle from you he's in his mind he's saying yeah i'm scared i'm shaking in my shoes i can't wait for this to be over. Meanwhile, he's in he's in the bag. He's working the heavy bag. He's been jumping rope. He's been staying hungry, okay? He wants he you know, I I love to make a Rocky analogy on this. I love to make a Rocky analogy on this, you know. Which Rocky? Uh, Which Rocky? Rocky 3 is my go-to. Rocky 3 is my go-to uh, just because I like to compare myself to thunder myself to Thunderlips, uh, you know. Um, but in in this in this particular analogy, we got to bring up Mr. T. We got to talk about Clubber Lang. Okay? We got to talk about a man that's been in the basement working hard, getting hungry, okay? And uh, this guy's been doing that in Minnesota. He's been doing the work. He's been hitting the heavy bag. He ain't, he hasn't been soft, okay? Look at JD Vance. He looks soft. He's been eating cheeseburgers and taking Ozempic, okay? This Diet is not a man that's new. ready to go in there and scrap. This is not a man that'll rip your heart out and stomp on it he's no coach waltz yeah who can stay hard for longer i guess is what uh uh, zach is uh, asking here um and frankly i don't know i mean we should test both make sure neither of them are on any kind of supplements or blue chew or anything let's be real Oh, 100 percent. i mean like for waltz i mean on one end like the whole like waltz is nervous thing like uh you know obviously like what is he going to be nervous of from jd like who can like get in the pool with a shirt on better like i just i don't see what the like the scariness of of jd is but on the other side i will say i think kamala has made a a fatal mistake in not putting waltz out there more like waltz is not getting the practice and the reps because yeah you can be an all-star athlete but if you're not getting the reps if you're not in confrontational interviews like jd vance has been for the last hundred days like obviously to a lot of people it's just been like him stepping on rakes and like you know to use a word from a a, a close friend but clowning himself um but anybody with ears and eyes that's that's been pretty much but he but it has like you know, it, that's going to make anyone a little bit sharper, a little bit r- like ready to be on the defense. And and I do think that like Kamala's team has done Waltz like zero favors here. Yeah, I, I think this is the exact analysis that we heard before Kamala went out and absolutely spanked Donald Trump in the debate. I'll tell you what, guys, you guys think that J.D. Vance, after getting clobbered by reporter after reporter, is going to take care of uh, Tim Waltz, coach Waltz, governor of Minnesota? No, absolutely not, guys. Here's the real rub. Here's the 411. It's fake 
news. And the reality is, is that Jim Walls has been where he needs to be. This weekend, he was in the Minnesota Ann Arbor, Michigan game. He was surrounded by 60,000 diehard Midwestern voters. And instead of pandering to the people who are already going to lock up the Democratic Party vote, he's out there managing swing voters in a place like Michigan. I think that's a good use of his time. I think the questions that real voters are going to ask him are going to translate into his debate performance. You guys wait. And Unfortunately, see. I, I do agree with Griffin. I don't think there's enough time left in this election for like on the ground meet and greet kind of bullshit to move the needle very much at all. I do think that he needs to be on TV. He needs to be making the case to the American public more. That's what got him the job in the first place was his excellent TV spots on CNN, MSNBC. He's already proven that he's a better communicator on the medium, on television than Kamala Harris is. It really doesn't make much sense. Plus, I do worry that they're just using him wrong. I feel like they're not talking enough about his actual accomplishments as a politician, as an executive in the state of Minnesota. They're not talking enough about how much better he's made that state since becoming governor, since getting his agenda through. And instead, right. weirdly, they're kind of using him in this like folksy, like, you know, yeah, pandery like way where SNL you'll, you'll see these way. ads. You'll see these ads on like Twitter where it's like donate five bucks to get access to like Tim Walls's like casserole <laughs> diary. recipe. And he's he's wearing a flannel shirt and there's yes. a flannel background. And there's another one where it was like, here's a video of Coach Walls showing you how to like, you know, fix your carburetor or some bullshit. And it it was and he that didn't even okay. show you. It just immediately oh, yeah, started exactly. talking about Project 2025 like three seconds in. Here's what like, you do. You call, is, you complain about this... Project 2025 until a Republican pulls over and fixes your car for you. <laughs> they went and like, and goes, actually that's not what project 2025 is about let me get over there <laughs> yeah i, I just I feel mean, like they're kind of misunderstanding his appeal a little bit and i do hope that uh in the debate people that have only seen that side of him see a new side of him and kind of understand his appeal and he's able to shine um but i am i am worried that they're kind of squandering what should be the absolute asset for this ticket the best part of the ticket yeah. the most electable aspect i'm like why are you What's who's the who's the strategist behind this? So here's I'll 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 enlighten you guys. Here's here's the four one one. Like I said, you know, yeah. uh, you guys have been talking about this a lot. I heard a lot of this. Uh, like I said, I heard a lot of the same criticisms, right? Uh, where oh, Kamala's not a great speaker. Oh, Kamala's okay, hold on. From the but, but she Kamala's didn't have a debate. Do, hold on. All right, I'll, you go first. Me, she did debate. She did debate Donald. Trump she did beautiful. And she wiped the floor with him. She did and, a self tape. Uh, she did self tape. Sustains itself. <laughs> Uh, it was a self tape with three other people in the break. room. Guess what the big moment for Tim Walz is going to be? It's going to be the debate that everybody's watching one month before the election. Outside of that, yes, I do think it's important that he shows his face in places like Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. It's definitely important. That's exactly what he's been doing. And then he has a moment where he lampoons the other vice president live on television he absolutely wipes the floor with him okay uh leaves no crumbs behind talks about the vision for the future i think he's going to do that i think he's going to pick up exactly where no, Kamala yeah we, where she had the politics we agree with joy, that he's gonna have the politics of legislation yeah so we agree with that nervous? it's about no, to be a no no no, no dude like that you, you didn't defu you, you didn't refute a single one of our points you just soyed out on the <laughs> stuff that we already agree about like and again, listen, what are you folks. About you didn't make a single reasonable argument. <gasps> yeah, no, we did. We we agree with you on all the Gosh. joy and this how he's best to be the Harlem Globetrotters. What's Griffin's your difference? No, what's your disagreement I'm, with I'm, us as with far as the media strategy? Yeah, insane reps, insane that like yes, obviously it's probably pretty easy to beat Vance. Yes, like Waltz oh, has a great I, I image and runs on great stuff. The, but like, why are we hiding him? Why are we keeping him in the garage? He's not in the garage, guys. He was just out at the Ann Arbor, Michigan. He was just uh Minneapolis football game. No, 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 I know that. Go and no, I know that. I know. I know. He loves to eat pot sticks, pot stickers, and fucking <laughs> dumplings at fairs, and go. Oh yeah, this is pork chop on a stick. That's not going to help in a confrontational <laughs> and then interview. Run away from some uh, yeah, exactly, and, and they'll be like, "Hey, what about the hostages?" And they'll be like, "I gotta shove more pork down my gullet." Like you know, like the thing is, is like. Yeah, like exactly. It's like he's going to before he answers a question on Palestine, he's going to become Kobayashi. He's going to shove fifteen oh. fucking hot dogs down his throat before you're going to get you any question so about mean, anything substantive. So I'm not it's, saying it's, that I like the answer. I refute your point, but what I'm telling you is, you would have said the exact same thing going into the Kamala debate. You said she wasn't getting enough reps in. You said she wasn't getting enough. Uh, and she media wasn't. She had to bring Tim Waltz with, and then she wiped the also, floor that, with him. So that's what a, does it matter? That's actually a, telling you. At least there's a strategy behind not putting Kamala in front of the cameras because she kind of sucks in interviews. With Tim Walls, we're saying it's stupid not to because he does so well in interviews. It's yes, like he's the, exactly. the biggest asset to the ticket. Why not put him out there more to make up for Kamala's deficiency in that regard? Let her do more rally stuff on the ground. Yes. 
you know, big mm-hmm. teleprompter speeches. Let him do impromptu, off the cuff questions. Because as we saw, he's actually really good at framing this stuff. Uh, he actually is really good at inspiring people to vote for this ticket and to sell them on the policies. He was doing that before he even got picked to be the running mate. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, they shouldn't let the weird thing fade. They shouldn't let his, you know, banger framing that really. Uh, sold him, uh, became, you know, made him be, be the pick in the first place. They shouldn't let that fade. They should have him out there hammering that stuff over and over again, uh, calling J.D. Vance and Donald yeah. Trump weird. If anything, just because it helps like him. Like, 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 yes, okay, the, Kamala got away with it because Trump shot himself in the fucking head. Like, like there was, that I was not J.D. a... J.D. Vance is going to shoot himself in the fucking well, and, head, too. Hopefully. And, may, and maybe, and maybe, but fundamentally, J.D. Vance is not like an, a fucking octomillionarian who can't not keep his head straight. Like, J.D vance is a nerd he is a nerd who has like suffered who has been through a very hard media environment that's been incredibly confrontational and that just naturally is better reps now i still think waltz is going to win but if if you are a coach or you're someone that is coaching right the kamala the head. No, 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 you, cause you think it's binary. You think that me and, me and, uh, Gavin, by the way, you know, I love our shows called circle jerk and all we do is fucking yell at each other. Uh, so the, <laughs> the thing is, is like, we're not, we're, we all think he's going to win, but we just think they're not doing, they're, you could seal the deal even more by like giving him those opportunities. It's a violent circle. Jerk. I mean, I guess that's true, right? All I'm saying is that I think their strategy is working. And I think that when you have Tim Waltz out doing things like this, it is going to make a meaningful impact on the margin, whereas most people who tune into MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, they aren't actual swing voters. I think getting fucking, you know, hand to hand, you know, connections with people is something that will move the needle. And if you guys want to know why they're not putting him out 24 seven, it's because they don't want him to constantly upstage Kamala Harris. They want Kamala That's Harris true. People, That's a good like answer. Do yeah. not want him to constantly upstage her. They're just not going to let that happen. It's it, it, she is the top of the ticket, and they don't want him to look like he's the president behind her. It's a vanity thing, but that's a big part of the reason they're not adopting that strategy. Um, yeah, no, I just I, feel I, like I agree with that. I would put my ego aside. I would put my ego aside personally if it meant getting into the White House. But like the White House. I'm it's just saying, like, yeah, sure, upstage me for fucking three weeks, and then I'm going to be president, and I can send you to the doghouse if I want. Like, who cares if you get upstaged for a couple weeks? I think there's also, I think um, there's two two things going on here. One is, like, I do think that, like, Waltz fundamentally cannot give, like, the lifeless, ghoulish answers on Israel-Palestine that, like, the State Department or, like, Biden does. I think that, like, fundamentally he'll have a more empathetic answer that conflicts with the current administration's goals on, on immigration um, too you and never immigration hear too immigration. exactly yeah it's so like i think there's just to say the stuff yeah. that they want him to do so there's those there's that aspect and then you know this was widely reported on when kamala was picking him is that he told her hey i'm not good at debates he told her like hey that's that, that's like not my my skill set you know, and I guess that's the excuse of uh, most that's lefties like saying, on the internet. And then everybody's <laughs> like, hey, will you go throw the first pitch out? Like, he can throw the first pitch out. He can go to the batting cages, like, yeah. you know, and the rest of us have a few beers and hit some balls. Okay, that's what you're asking him to do. Go play wiffle ball in the backyard with your kids. He's a Midwesterner. He could do that. He could defeat J.D. Vance if he wants to. Uh, Coach Waltz versus jd vance i mean come on guys. yeah that's why i don't buy the whole nervous thing it's like this dude is the governor of minnesota so i mean he got that position somehow he had to out debate a few people he was a congressman before that had to out debate a few people so clearly he's not bad at it also i mean he's clearly good at media appearances he's good at off-the-cuff interviews is it really that much of a different skill set to debate someone versus answer tough questions on tv like it's basically the same skill set if you ask me so i think he's lying i think he's only putting that whole nervous nervous thing out there to lower everyone's expectations <laughs> yeah i really do uh, and also so, leave the room for just in case he does poorly you know but i think i don't think he will so we all agree zach that we love we love coach we cry every time he comes on stage and he generally is a more likable person running on better policy so let's look at our man jd pants over here uh now now jd like what do we think jd is going to whip out at this thing because I think like JD's biggest problem other than that I want to kill myself. I'm sorry. Sorry, YouTube. I want to unalive myself when I see him on the television screen. 
Um, but I feel like, you know, he's still been molded in that battle. But his big problem is that he is like a nerd and he like can't talk generally about things. And no, he dude, loves to talk about like weird policy. He's so fucking grating and gross and unlikable. And he's made himself cringe <laughs> on the internet. And there's no coming back from that. Like you can spin it and like a PC, <laughs> like enlightened, like I'm writing about this for CNN.com. The fact is he's, he's publicly humiliated himself at every single opportunity since he was pulled from relative conservative obscurity, like hillbilly, hillbilly elegy. Hillbil and Biology. right it had kind of waned he, he he was not very popular in the mainstream political discourse at that time and then he continued to belly flop and belly flop and belly flop and belly flop now juxtapose that with tim waltz who had a similar circumstance plucked from obscurity after being relatively accomplished as a governor of minnesota and what has he done he has played the game hop from one lily pad to the next lily pad to the next lily pad hasn't had a scandal hasn't had a controversy and has been able to raise the approval rating and the popularity of the Democratic Party ticket by a fuckload since he was added in August 6th. So I just think if you compare and contrast that, there's absolutely no reason to be worried, and there's no reason that to think J.D. Vance will catch lightning in the bottle and have the best night of his life after he's done nothing but step okay, up breaks. Okay, don't, don't get... Okay, sorry, Griffin. I didn't mean to cut you, you off. You, for, you first. Get him untwisted. He's a pretzel uh -huh. right now. All I was going to say is, bro, like, I, I hear you. I agree to some extent, but you're playing a dangerous game. Everyone yes. did the same thing with Sarah Palin back in 2008. Everyone said it was going to be the most dis like historically disgraceful VP debate performance in modern American history. And then she just did fine. And everyone was like, uh -huh. oh, wow, she's she's actually like capable of debating. Maybe she's not so bad. And then everyone gave her too much credit, more than she deserved, because the bar was set so low. So while I agree, J.D. Vance sucks, I do think he's intelligent enough to go into this debate with an actual strategy unlike trump did in the last one i don't think he has as yes, big of an ego exactly as does, and he knows that he's actually going to take it seriously so i'm just saying expect him to do better than you think hey, let me bring up a point that i've been meaning to get to about let, this you guys let, 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 let me bring up a point He's gonna. He's not gonna want to talk so much about Palestine, right? Neither of them are. Uh, no, what he's gonna want to no, talk no. about is immigration, and yeah. I think Vance. that my forecast is that Tim Walz eats JD's lunch Ass. when it comes to immigration, and here's exactly how he's gonna do it. He is going to talk about the He's gonna talk out of both sides of his mouth really brilliantly. He's going to talk about the accomplishments of the Biden administration by being brutal fascists that have been like, you know, anti-asylum seekers, pro-Title 42, you know, really, really pro-border crackdown in a way that I don't agree with. Right. He's going to celebrate that and tout it as their loyal laurels, excuse me. But then he's also going to cloak it in the language that we've been uh, suggesting the Democrats do from an analytical standpoint. Right. Like I would w want them to change their policy. They're not going to do that. Right. But at least he'll couch it in language that will help them win, which is to say. He's not going to be afraid to say immigrants are great for this country. We're a nation of immigrants. This right. country is a melting pot. Immigrants built this country. My ancestors yeah. are immigrants. Your ancestors are immigrants. That's why we celebrate immigration of this country. We don't fear it. Immigrants are welcome here. Meanwhile, he'll also tout how we make them explicitly unwelcome here all the time. Right. And I think that J.D. Vance is going to come off as racist and he's going to come across as unhinged. And I think the moderators are going to set him up for failure. I think they're going to make him respond to, you know, some of the really ridiculous. I, unhinged I do think you're right. Springfield, Ohio. They're going to they're going to force him to the moderators are 100 percent going to say, J.D. Vance, do you admit here and right. now on yes. live television that you lied Right. You lied about these uh, cats and dogs being eaten by Haitians. And then that's going to make J.D. Vance nervous. He's going to he, yep. he's not good on the he's not good on the spot. He's not good at being tough. <laughs> Remember when uh, Kamala and and Walls, they were uh, talking a lot about Trump at the cemetery, right? The the military cemetery where yes. Trump disgraced the veterans or whatever. Where they they pushed over Vance an autistic person or something like <laughs> Well, J.D. Vance, he got on out of TV or did a rally or whatever, and he tried to sound all tough, and he was like, I just... Uh, screw you! Or something. Do you remember <laughs> that? I think we reacted to it. And it was like the most... Failed attempt to sound tough I've it was, ever seen. It was so. What, so what's going to happen if if we're lucky is that the moderators, in addition to Tim Walls, are going to trigger him into trying to you know stand up for himself and. Q, uh, the the you know fake news media is spreading these lies, and I'm just sticking up for the, the people. It's going to be really cringe. So I hope that he gets triggered like that. I hope he tries to sound tough and then kind of falters, loses his balance, and is off balance for the rest of the debate. That is definitely the best we can hope for.